Hey guys, Justin here. I want to show you guys how I use telemetry to improve and also how I use telemetry to coach people. This is going to be on the oval side of things. If you want to see how road people do it, then you can go check out Swellio. He has some great videos on that. So I want to give you an example right now. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so here we are on VRS. This is what I use. You can also use Garage 61 for almost the same functionality and free. I'm gonna leave both links in the description in case you wanna choose which one you wanna use. So to start off with, I got a lap from myself and from a person who is around 3K on ovals at Arca at Homestead, and I compared our best lap times. So the very cool thing with telemetry is we don't just have to check for hot lap on how to improve times. We can also use telemetry to improve our long run in our tire wear and I will show you how. So the first row here is going to be for speed, second row is for time, third row is for line distance, fourth row is for throttle, and fifth row is for brake, and sixth row is for steering angle. So steering angle is very very important but we'll get to that at the end because that's what's going to help us out on long run. So we'll start out with the speed delta. What we notice here is that the speed delta looks pretty darn similar, but the moment things get really different, they get really different. So speed delta is the best way to determine how or where that you should change uh, what your approach is. So we see that three and four has the biggest issue and that lines up because the time delta really uh, balloons in the middle of three and four. What we want to do is we want all of the different lines to tell us a story all together. So I'm gonna be down here with the throttle and the brake. And so what do we see with the throttle and the brake? We see that the blue line is gonna be me and the red line is gonna be the person I'm comparing to. So I'm about two and a half tenths faster than them. So straight away, you see that I am off the throttle for a lot less time. Now the throttle is going to be the most intuitive line to follow and you're gonna look for three main things. The first thing you wanna look for is when you get off the throttle and when you get on the throttle, so your points. Your points are great, but those are pretty easy to just look at and find out. The second thing you wanna look for is the smoothness. When does smoothness matter, when does it not matter? You see that I am pretty much not smooth on entry. Now there's some merit to that little hold at 50% for a little bit for stability, but that starts to get into the super technical intricate stuff. What we're really looking at is how I'm able to get in the throttle earlier, but it's a little bit more smooth getting up to the partial throttle compared to the red line. And so what this tells me is that you can get on the throttle earlier, but it requires smoother inputs. So maybe if you weren't used to those smoother throttle inputs, you might think that the limit of raising the throttle would be later in the corner, when in reality, you can get on the throttle much earlier, but only if you're doing it smoother. So some of these things are like super obvious in your head, like, oh, duh, I hear it all the time in videos. But what it actually is, is giving it a visualization of these concepts that you might not even think that you're struggling on. So that's really what telemetry is for, is providing a visualization. And the third thing is just when you get back up to 100%. So the 100%, since I was able to get up to it slightly earlier, that means I'm able to carry more speed off the corner. Basically confirmed with me being able to carry uh, more center corner speed, but being able to pretty much match if not beat off. And what we also see on the entry is that I actually carry less speed into the corner. So this is one of those examples of easier in, but get back on the throttle earlier. And you might think to yourself, yeah, that's obvious, but sometimes you think you're doing something and you could be doing it a little bit better. So let's go on to the break because the break tells a very similar story. But first, this video is brought to you by the show NASCAR iRacing League. The show is a league that's still in its infancy, but looking to recruit new members to add to their already growing community. They have a very interesting concept where their top series is their premier cup series, and it has a charter system just like in real life. So owners can pick prospective drivers from their feeder series, so the truck and Xfinity series, to drive for their cup team. And on top of that, they also have a Gen 4 league with old retro style point system rules, etc. But don't just like turning left, you're in luck because they're also starting a road league. Take a look in the description for their link to their Discord for more information on their league. We'll see you there. We're looking at three and four here in particular and we see that I'm breaking harder. We get on the brakes at about the same time, but I'm breaking harder. And we see that reflected with the speed of mine being slightly, slightly less than the red line. But what does that afford me? That affords me to get back onto the throttle 
much, much earlier. So it's not even just the smoothest of inputs. There's another chapter to the story. The second chapter of the story is breaking a little bit harder earlier. And when we put those two things together, we get the conclusion that we can get on the throttle earlier given those two conditions. So the break is very good for telling not only break here, do exactly this, do exactly that, but it also tells us why breaking there is better. And for this instance, breaking earlier is better because we can get on the throttle earlier. And so lastly, we're gonna go on to the steering angle, which is this bottom row that my face is covering. But steering angle is super important because if you remember in my tire saving videos, I said, the less that you turn the steering wheel, the more tires that you're going to save. Now, this is assuming that we are on the same steering ratios. So things might get a little bit wonky if people are on different steering ratios, the angles can be a little bit off. But assuming that we're on the same steering ratios, we can see a huge thing in both one and two and three and four that I am using less steering wheel throughout the corner. And so this is what's gonna be super beneficial for long run. A lot of people wonder, how do you save tires and go fast? Well, you save tires and go fast by getting this steering angle curve lower while not making any other compromises. So how did I do that in one and two? Well, if we try to see patterns and we try to tell a story, it becomes very, very obvious. Yeah, our throttle curves are pretty darn similar. I get on the throttle 100% earlier, but that's past the point where tire wear is a super huge factor. The only thing that it can be is this break. I braked double the amount that he broke about the same time, but double the amount. And what did that allow me? So although I gave up that speed, you can see right here, I gave up a decent amount of speed here, this allowed me to get back on the throttle and use less steering wheel. So sometimes these techniques, it's not even just about going faster. I didn't break it 20% to go faster. I broke it 20% because you can see right after the brake is done, I'm unloading my steering wheel already. And you can see the difference is 30, 40 degrees in the center of the corner where the car is under the most load. So this is huge for tire saving. And so sometimes you can find the answers for that sort of things through telemetry. And the very last thing I wanna talk about is this line distance, because this can also be an indicator that you're turning in too early or too late. And spoiler alert, 99% of the time it's too late into a corner. So you can see here that the person is 6.56 feet to the right of my line on corner entry or about as we're entering the corner. So as we're breaking pretty much. So this indicates that I had an earlier turn in than him that also might've been a contributing factor and honestly probably was because you can see a pattern here. When we go to turns three and four, which is the second set of curves over here, we can see the same exact thing. He is almost 10 feet to the right under braking or as we are turning into the corner. So that means that I am turning in earlier than him. So that's just how I use telemetry. I compare my laps against better people's laps in a similar way than I did just now. It's just that the differences are a lot more minute, so I didn't wanna show that. But thank you to the anonymous person who I stole the lap of to do this. And other than that, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.